if Ash Ketchum went to the Paldea region. That's what we'll explore in this video as we begin my fan-made Scarlet and Violet anime series. What adventures await Ash in this new chapter? Find out right now and subscribe for more videos. Episode 1 The story begins in Pallet Town, with 12-year-old Ash Ketchum and his partner Pikachu. They're gearing up for an exciting journey to the Paldea region, with Professor Oak, who's scheduled to deliver a lecture at Mezagos Academy. Before they leave, Delia packs Ash a croquette sandwich for the trip. On the plane, Professor Oak asks Ash if he still aspires to be a Pokemon Master. Ash agrees, but he's still trying to figure out what that really means for him. He then recalls a talk with Gary, who suggested that Mezagos Academy's unique program might help him find the answer. As they approach Paldea, a mysterious Pokemon flies by, catching the attention of Ash and Pikachu. They then reach the bustling city Mezagosa and make their way to the Academy, where they meet Director Clavel and Nemona, the enthusiastic student council president. Nemona is a champion-ranked trainer and has heard all about Ash. She's thrilled to meet another champion-level trainer and can't wait to battle him, and Ash is equally eager. They hit it off instantly, so Clavel proposes that Nemona give Ash a tour of the Academy. Nemona eagerly guides Ash to the Academy, highlighting the various classes and facilities, and introduces a few teachers. Ash asks about Gary, but Nimona says that Gary's busy with Jacques right now, so they'll likely meet up at the orientation. Later, as they explore Mesagoza, Nimona stops at the city's central battlefield. She tells Ash that she can't hold it any longer, and challenges him to a battle. Ash agrees, keen on testing the skills of a Paldean champion. Ash and Pikachu face off against Nimona and her Palmo. Ash starts with Pikachu's quick attack, hitting Palmo directly. Pikachu then uses Thunderbolt, but Palmo dodges using Dig and counters from behind. Nemona orders Palmo to use Thunder Punch, but Pikachu catches it with Electroweb. However, Palmo breaks free using a strong Discharge. Both Ash and Nemona are thrilled with the match. Nemona then commands Palmo to use Mach Punch, while Ash counters with Pikachu's Iron Tail. They're evenly matched. Palmo then uses Dig again, causing significant damage to Pikachu. Nemona follows up with Discharge, but Ash has Pikachu use an Electroweb Counter Shield and then launches it back with a powerful Thunderbolt, knocking back Palmo. Nemona is ecstatic, calling this a fruitful battle. She urges Ash to join the Academy, seeing him as the perfect rival for her. She then prepares to switch Palmo and tells Ash that she wants to see even more of his Pokemon. However, Ash only brought Pikachu with him, bumming Nemona out of it. Suddenly, Pikachu gets captured by Team Rocket, who followed Ash to Paldea. They quickly flee, leaving Ash helpless, unable to rescue Pikachu. But Nemona, with Cyclozar at her side, offers Ash a ride. They chase Team Rocket towards Mesagoza outskirts, managing to get ahead. However, Team Rocket remain unfazed, as there's still a lot of reach. Nemona then pulls out a Terra Orb to terrestrialize her Cyclozar. She commands a powerful Terra Blast attack, blasting off Team Rocket and saving Pikachu. Ash is totally amazed, and he learns from Nemona about terrestrialization and its ability to enhance a Pokemon's type powers. This new knowledge excites Ash, and has him considering joining the Academy even more. Suddenly, Ash and Nemona hear a strange cry from the beach. And to their surprise, they see a Pokemon that they've both never seen before. Episode 2 As Ash and Nimona approach the mysterious Pokemon, Ash realizes it's the same one he saw earlier. The Pokemon looks weak, but Ash notices it's attracted to his croquette sandwich, so he feeds it, which helps it regain its strength. The Pokemon grows fond of Ash and Pikachu, so they introduce themselves and wonder where it came from. The Pokemon draws its attention toward the cliff, wanting Ash and Nimona to ride it. Nimona thinks it resembles a Cyclozar, so they decide to ride it to the top of the cliff. We then shift focus to a boy, who just took a book from a strange lab. He encounters Ash and Nimona outside, who were led by the mysterious Pokemon. The boy is surprised and upset to see the Pokemon, who he calls Koridon. Nimona recognizes the boy as Arvin, whose parents are the renowned Professor Sada and Turo. Arvin gets even more upset when his parents are mentioned, saying it doesn't matter who his parents are. Koridon seems eager to enter the lighthouse, and Arvin, noticing Koridon's trust in Ash, allows them in for a bit. Arvin shared that he and Koridon once lived in this now abandoned lab, prompting Ash to ask about their connection to one another. Arvin, who's hesitant, admits that Koridon isn't his Pokemon, but doesn't elaborate further than that, leaving a sense of mystery. Suddenly, a device creates a thick fog in the lab, causing the group to head outside for fresh air. They're attacked by a Golduck and Rhydon, owned by Zerk and Anya from a group called the Explorers. They reveal that they have been pursuing Koridon and they won't let it escape them this time. Arvin worries about Koridon's vulnerable state and wonders why it won't defend itself. Ash steps in to protect it, but Pikachu's Thunderbolt fails due to Rhydon's Lightning Rod ability, allowing it to counter. They prove to be formidable, 
So Nomona urges Ash to escape with Karaidon while she battles with Cyclozar and Palmo. Ash and Arvin take Karaidon to hide in the nearby inlet grotto, and they have a brief moment of peace. During this time, Ash questions Arvin about Karaidon once again, and why the explorers are after it. Although he doesn't want to talk about it, Arvin confesses a bit more, revealing that Karaidon once belonged to his mother and is a Pokemon whose origin is tied to the Great Crater of Paldea. The explorers are an organization that want control over the Great Crater, which is why they're after Karaidon. This raises even more questions for Ash. However, their talk is interrupted once Zerk discovers their location. Arvin watches anxiously as Ash and Pikachu battle alone. Despite their disadvantage against Rhydon though, Ash cleverly makes Pikachu create a Dust Cloud to blind Rhydon before defeating it with an Iron Tail. Arvin is impressed with Ash's skills. Zerk then sends out Skarmory, but their battling has disturbed a nearby Houndoom and its pack of Houndour, who attack fiercely. Pikachu struggles against the Onslaught, but in a surprising turn, Karaidon transforms, knocking back Houndoom and then carrying Ash and Arvin to safety, leaving Zerk to deal with the Houndour. The boys then reunite with Nimona, who just defeated Onia. Shortly after, Karaidon loses its strength and collapses from exhaustion, so the group decides to take it to the Pokemon Center. At the Pokemon Center, Arvin entrusts Ash with Karaidon's Master Ball, showing faith in Ash's ability to handle it. Ash is surprised but thanks him and promises to take good care of Karaidon. Episode 3 The group has returned to Mesagoza. Before the orientation, Nimona rushes to inform Clavel of their experience. As the boys reach the school, Ash questions Arvin about Karaidon's Master Ball, but Arvin is still trying to avoid the conversation. Suddenly, they spot a group of students who call themselves Team Star, pressuring a girl to join them. She refuses, and when they don't back off, Ash steps in to protect her. This annoys Team Star, so they order their Pokemon to attack, but Pikachu easily defeats them with a single Thunderbolt. As Arvin praises Ash's strength, the girl gets a good look and actually recognizes him. Just then, more Team Star members arrive, but Karadon comes out of its Master Ball to scare them away. Karadon is really friendly towards the girl, however, it aggressively licks her face, making her uncomfortable. Arvin freaks out too, suggesting Ash to keep Karadon away from the public for now, so he does that and apologizes. The girl is shy but grateful and introduces herself as Penny from the Galar region, where she remembers Ash as their former champion. This surprises Arvin, and he now understands why Ash is so talented. He asks Ash what brought him to Paldea, and Ash shares his dream of becoming a Pokemon Master, and hopes that the school will help him understand what that means. Penny, who's feeling awkward, leaves in the middle of their talk, leaving Ash and Arvin a bit confused. The boys eventually reach the schoolyard for the orientation, when suddenly, Team Star interrupts with their loud music coming from a strange vehicle, annoying the other students. The majority are too intimidated to confront them, however, so Ash steps up once again. He meets one of the Team Star bosses, Giacomo, aka DJ Vice. Giacomo thinks that the school is dull, and he's just trying to spice things up. Ash disagrees, saying that they're causing trouble. Giacomo tells Ash, however, that if he knew any better, he'd know that this school isn't worth protecting, and then he sends out his Bisharp to face Pikachu. Pikachu uses Quick Attack, but Bisharp counters with a solid Iron Head. Pikachu follows with Electro Web, but Bisharp escapes using Night Slash. Giacomo then commands Stone Edge, while Ash commands Thunderbolt. Both attacks connect, yet both Pokemon withstand it and stare each other down, ready for more action. Just then, Gary arrives to stop the fight, reminding Giacomo that unsupervised battles aren't allowed. Giacomo mocks Gary for his new assistant teaching role, and then leaves with the rest of Team Star, warning Ash that they'll settle this in the future. Gary and Ash then reconnect, with Gary joking about how Ash is finding himself in trouble before school even starts. Director Clavel then arrives to begin the orientation. They discuss the classes, introduce the staff, announce the treasure hunt, and Professor Oak gives an inspiring speech to end it off. Afterwards, Ash talks with Oak and Clavel, deciding to stay at Mezagoza Academy. So far, he's met interesting students and the mysterious Karaidon. He says he wants to work hard to understand Karaidon, hoping that it'll bring him closer to being a Pokemon Master. Professor Oak is happy to hear that, and promises to take good care of Ash's Pokemon while he's gone. The episode ends with Ash and Pikachu gazing at the horizon, eager for their new adventure in the Paldea region. At the same time, at Cabo Poco, we're introduced to Liko, who's holding on to her good luck charm, excited for her first day at Mezagoza Academy. Episode 4 Ash is in his new Naranja dorm uniform and heads to his first day of class. Jacques kicks off the school year by updating everyone's Pokedex app and then announcing that each student will get a partner Pokemon provided by Mesagosa's sister school. While Gary distributes the Pokemon, Jacques tells Ash that he is excused to meet with Director Clavel, making him a bit nervous. At the office, Clavel introduces Ash to Professor Sada via video chat. She is here to discuss Ash's recent encounter with Karaidon. Karaidon and Sada are happy to see each other once again. 
Sana then reveals that she is on a personal mission right now, so she entrusts Ash with helping Karaidon recover its powers. Ash eagerly accepts. Because this is such an important task, Clavel tells Ash that Karaidon will be his academy partner moving forward, and advises him to use the rest of the period to bond with it. Back at the classroom, each student has been given a new partner Pokemon. Arvin got Quaxley, Nimona got Rowlet, and Liko got Sprigatito. Liko is excited to meet Sprigatito, but the Pokemon isn't too keen on her just yet and runs out of the classroom. Liko chases after her, worried about making a bad first impression. Meanwhile, Ash and Pikachu are trying to train Coridon, but it lacks the spirit to battle, so Ash decides to play with Coridon instead to strengthen their bond. At the same time though, they're being observed by the explorers. Ash soon spots Liko in trouble, and he recognizes her from class, so he offers to help find Sprigatito. They search Mesagoza on Coridon, and eventually find her sunbathing on a roof. Sprigatito was just nervous in her new setting, so Ash and Liko decide to find a quieter place outside of the city to bond with their Pokemon. During this time, Ash and Liko get to know each other. Ash talks about his love for battles, while Liko talks about her favorite rookie streamer, Needle Thing. They even share their dreams with one another. Ash wanting to be a Pokemon master, and Liko aiming to understand the Terrastal phenomenon, inspired by her grandmother's charm that looks like a Terra Orb crystal. Their talk is interrupted by Team Rocket, who are after Pikachu. They're quickly drawn to Coridon, however, and now want to capture it as well. Meowth gets a crush on Sprigatito, also making her a target. They send out Cramorant and Grimmsnarl to face Pikachu, while Liko, who is new to battling, is encouraged by Sprigatito. They have a fierce battle, with Pikachu doing most of the work. Grimmsnarl uses Dark Pulse and misses, almost hitting Liko. At the last second though, her charm protects her with an energy shield, surprising everyone. Liko then sees a strange Pokemon before it turns back into her charm. While Jesse and James are distracted though, Pikachu weakens them with Quick Attack. Sprigatito then helps blind them with Leafage, allowing Pikachu to blast them off with the finishing Thunderbolt. Ash is relieved that they're safe, but asks Liko what was the deal with her charm. She isn't sure however, as this has never happened before. The episode ends with Zerk and Anya reporting the strange power that came from Liko's charm, intriguing their superior, and drastically changing their mission. Hey, hey, hey! All you epic Pokemon trainers, Neo Thing here, and this video is sponsored by Manta Sleep. Meet the Manta Sleep Mask, the ultimate sleep companion designed to help you block out light completely for a deeper and more restorative sleep. Unlike traditional sleep masks, Manta Sleep Mask features adjustable eye cups that ensure no pressure on your eyelids, letting you blink freely and sleep in total darkness. Whether you're a side sleeper, a back sleeper, or a traveling trainer needing to catch some Z's on the go, Manta Sleep is your perfect solution. Plus, there's even the Manta Sleep mask sound that includes razor thin bluetooth headphones allowing you to stream your favorite music or audio while you sleep upgrade your sleep today by checking out mantasleep.com and use zaktoshi for 10 percent off your order episode 5 ash just finished home economics class with saguaro learning about picnicking and sandwich making this inspires arvin to share his dream of creating the world's best healing sandwiches for pokemon Arvin has been skipping class to study the Scarlet Book, which talks about the Herba Mystica, rare healing herbs that are guarded by powerful Titan Pokemon. He wants Ash to help him face them. Ash agrees, and they plan to explore the southern province due to rumors of a huge Pokemon being there. This gets the attention of Roy and his partner Fuecoco. Roy, who owns the Violet Book, bonds with Arvin over their shared admiration of Heath's work. Roy's favorite chapter is about the ancient adventurer with a black Rayquaza. His grandfather would read it to him all the time, which inspired Roy to want to discover legendary treasures of his own, so he asks to join Ash and Arvin, which Arvin accepts. After school, the boys head to Secluded Beach, where the giant Pokemon is rumored to be. They spot a large Tatsugiri, a Pokemon that's not usually found here. As the Tatsugiri gets ready to attack, the boys send out their own Pokemon. They have the advantage due to numbers, and after Pikachu's Thunderbolt, it looks like they won. Arvin hopes this victory would lead them to the Herba Mystica, but instead, the weakened Tatsugiri summons Titan Dondozo. It then boosts Dondozo's power by jumping into its mouth. The boys are stunned, but Ash quickly learns from his Pokedex that this is Tatsugiri's defensive strategy. Pikachu stuns Dondozo with Thunderbolt, allowing Quaxley and Fuikoko to attack, but Dondozo fights back with a powerful Lako Tail, throwing everyone off balance. Pikachu and Quaxley counter with Electro Web and Water Gun, while Fuikoko struggles to use Ember. Dondozo breaks free with Water Pulse and uses Body Slam, but everyone dodges. Dondozo follows with Order Up though, for massive damage. It then uses Aqua Tail on Pikachu, but Ash jumps in to protect him, knocking them both into the ocean. Ash is now unconscious, but luckily, a pot of Finny's then saved them, bringing him and Pikachu safely back to shore. 
Ash thanks them and then rushes back to help Arvin and Roy. With Dondozo about to finish them off with another order up, Ash makes Pikachu use Quick Attack to get inside its mouth. Pikachu then uses a powerful Thunderbolt to defeat Tatsugiri and paralyze Dondozo. This allows Arvin and Roy to deliver the final blow, defeating Dondozo, which makes it cough up a clear amulet. Roy excitedly grabs it and claims it as his first treasure. The Tatsugiri and Dondozo then flee, leaving no Herba Mystica. Despite the disappointment, Ash uplifts Arvin, praising their performance in their first Titan battle. The Finnis then cheer for them as well, and Ash thanks them once again for their help. The episode ends with Arvin feeling optimistic about their next encounter, but also curious about the Titan's origin and the missing Herba Mystica. Episode 6 Ash is in art class, where Hassel has the students draw to rationalize Professor Gibble, who has just turned into a nice type. This introduces the students to the idea that Pokemon can change their Terra types. They're excited to learn that they'll soon be using Terra Orbs in their Battle Studies class. Meanwhile, Team Rocket, who are secretly watching Ash, become interested. We then flash back to Team Rocket HQ, where Jesse and James, having completed their training, are assigned a new mission by Giovanni. They are to investigate the Terrastal Phenomenon for its potential benefits to the organization and to establish Team Rocket's first base in Paldea. The best way for the trio to get Terra Orbs is by joining the Academy, but they're worried that Ash might recognize them if they use the same Pokemon, so they set out to catch new ones. They find an old ruin, thinking it'll be great for their secret base, and inside, they meet a cute Tinkatink. Jesse tries to catch it, but it runs away, so she chases after it. Meanwhile, James discovers an empty chest, perfect for his treasured bottle cap collection. Suddenly, a mischievous Gimme Ghoul shows up, claiming the chest. It tries to run off with James's bottle caps, but James quickly catches it with a Pokeball to prevent it from escaping. Meanwhile, after a wacky chase, Jesse finally corners the Tinkatink and catches it. As they're celebrating their new base, a wild spirit tomb attacks the trio. Scared at first, they quickly see this as a chance to test out their new Pokemon. However, they're soon overpowered. Gimme Ghoul has weak moves, and Tinkatink is easily scared. Despite this though, Jesse and James keep encouraging their Pokemon. They use a combined Astonish attack to weaken Spiritomb, and Tinkatink follows with a super effective Fairy Wind. They're thrilled by their victory. Except that wasn't enough to defeat Spiritomb, and it retaliates by blasting them off. Later, the trio decides that the ruins aren't a great place for their new secret base, but they're ready for the Academy. The next day, while Ash is in Homeroom, Jock introduces two new students, Jessalyn and Jamie. Episode 7 In Salvatore's language class, students must give a presentation about influential people from various regions. Ash chose to talk about two people, Professor Kakui from Alola and Leon from Galar, who had a big impact on his life. After a couple of other presentations, it's eventually Dot's turn. She nervously goes up with her Cyndaquil and talks about the Paldea region's Iono, which excites the classroom. Ash is a bit confused, but Liko explains that Iono is a popular streamer. Dot shares her dream of becoming a streamer just like Iono, but the class laughs, doubting she could be an influencer due to her shy personality. Ash defends her, however, insisting everyone should be able to follow their dreams. Salvatore agrees, and reminds the class to support each other, not to bully. The students apologize, but Penny is still worried about Dot. After class, Team Star tries to recruit Dot after her bullying incident, but Penny intervenes, fending them off with her shiny Eevee. Dot is surprised to see such a rare Pokemon. Penny reveals that she felt the connection to Dot, saying she reminds her a lot of herself, so she wanted to make sure she was okay. Ash and Liko soon joined them, wanting to check on Dot as well. She thanks Ash for defending her, and admits that was her first time publicly expressing her dream. She's grateful for their support, so she invites them to her room to share something with them. Dot confesses that she's actually Needle Thing, an up-and-coming streamer with about 200 subscribers. This blows Liko's mind, as she's a big fan of Needle Thing. She gets all nervous now and doesn't know how to act, which embarrasses Dot a little. Ash, Liko, and Penny promise to help her reach her dream of becoming as big as Iono, which makes Dot feel more confident and thankful for their new friendship. Later on, as Ash is returning to his dorm, he receives a mysterious call from his phone, from someone called Cassiopeia. They know about Ash's defiance against Team Star and his supportive nature, and want to recruit him for a special mission called Operation Starfall. This mission aims to stop Team Star from causing trouble at the school. It involves challenging and defeating the five star bosses, something Ash is well capable of doing. Cassiopeia instructs Ash to carry on as usual, until he's told otherwise. Ash accepts, but is a bit concerned, as it looks like his school life is about to get a lot more complicated. Meanwhile, it seems like Director Clavel overheard everything that transpired. Go Yeah, the 
behind every legend's glory We're the ones strong enough to reach for what others never try Not your 